Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video about the update on... Because uh, I, I made a video about this a couple, I think, weeks ago. But it seems like many people didn't watch it. Uh, many people didn't get uh, the point of it. Or uh, were a bit confused. And now we have a little bit more evidence. A bit more confidence. So uh, it's a bit more, I guess, uh, the evidence is going to be a bit more... Um, more clear, if you will. So, today's video is going to be about uh, why this oppressive heat that is going right now, this ongoing uh, ridiculous heat, and that will most likely continue through much of July and into most of August, like, why this oppressive heat could actually mean uh, a powerful winter, um, one of the stronger ones we've had in a while. So, uh, and I know, I've said this last year, and I was wrong, and I say it again this year, but this year, I have more reasons to be confident, and um, I would say I'm not as confident as I was last year, just because uh, you know I made a mistake, and obviously, uh, mistakes make you a better, a better, um, I guess, a better at what you made that mistake in. You know, so I made a meteorological mistake. Hopefully, now I'm, I'm more, uh, I guess, uh, pro not to make that same mistake. So, uh, if you guys would like to consider subscribing to this channel before we get into this video, I do all sorts of weather-related stuff, uh, long-range forecasts, short-range forecasts, winter storm forecasts, um, severe weather forecasts, um, all that stuff, and I talk about the winter, fall, ongoing weather, so consider subscribing if you are new. And if you are a returning viewer, uh, you know, liking the video would be absolutely tremendous, as that is what keep this, uh, keeps this channel going, so thank you so much for that. Right now, let's look at the GFS model uh, first, and then we'll look at the GE. Uh, GE EFS, which I had pulled up. I want to look at the temperature anomaly. So, um, the thing is that it's showing a bit of cool air with it, the GFS, but really it's one of the few models that's doing that. You can see it's showing a bit of cool air here across Saturday, and, uh, or sorry, it's showing a, cool, a bit of cool air now across the Midwest, but that really gets taken over by some oppressive heat into Saturday and Sunday. Now, uh, let's say uh, Saturday. Saturday, it doesn't look that bad on this map, right? Um, it looks as if a bit above towards the northeast, a bit below across the Mississippi Valley, and a bit below across the northern plains. Let me tell you, this Saturday, our forecast for Chicago and much of northern Illinois is close to 100 degrees. Yeah, the GFS definitely doesn't do the best job of representing this. If you were to look at the 2 minute temperature shaded, um, you can see it definitely shows uh, 80s, but it doesn't show uh, what the forecast high is going to be, and the forecast high is 95. And um, that's the heat indexes are going to be 100 plus. So this is definitely uh, kind of a, a bit where this GFS is flawed, if you will. It's showing a bit more of this cold air than it should be, or below average air, and it's not showing enough of this, uh, if you will, uh, above average temperatures. And, and notice that it shows a cooler air blast coming in next week around Tuesday, Wednesday, which uh, it is in, I guess, uh, agreement with the, the National Weather Service that there will be a general cool off across the Midwest at that time. Again, look, doesn't get much far to the south. Kind of hangs out in the Midwest and just stays there. Really, you can see that the West starts getting very hot, um, including parts of the Southeast, and this cold air again is overdone. And let me tell you that this is the daytime. The, the 18Z is the kind of like the 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Notice that it stays hot, and it stays uh, mainly above average across the country up until the 18Z. You may be wondering, why does it happen every uh, 18Z? Or why does it happen every day at noon? You can see it's more blue colors show up, and then more blue. The reason for that is that's because it's a day and time high. So what the GFS is saying is that the nights will be uh, normally warm, while the days are going to be closer to normal. Still generally above average, but you can see this looks way more impressive, say, impressive this image than this image. And you can see that the heat during the nights across Sunday... Uh, across Saturday into Sunday, you can see it's above average most of the country and a few areas where it's below. And then during the day, we see some uh, p patches of below average temperatures. Now, generally, again, um, I want to point this out. You can see this is more visible than this color, and that's about the same a deviance from average. And that's just because blue is more, I guess, uh, it's a, a bigger contrast on a white than like this light, barely visible orange. And you can see that basically there's going to be a wave this uh, Tuesday, um, Tuesday, Friday, that's gonna, Tuesday through Friday, that's going to come through the Midwest. But then you can see more heat, a bit of a cool down. But what I want to say is that the GFS is a bit um, too lenient with the, the with the cool air. It's going to be more hot than this. And if you were to look at the ensembles, that's basically, that basically tells the story. If you look at the 2 meter, temp uh, two meter temperature anomaly, 5 day average. 
And let's go back to the 12Z since the 18Z is just coming in. We could see generally warm temperatures, a little bit of that blue, but generally you could see above average temperatures during the hottest time of the year. is It's just going to be oppressive. The heat is going to be monstrosity. It's going to be uh, dangerous. That's the easiest way to put it. Let's look at the European models. You could see very much of the same thing. A bit of cool air to the north. Really though, just absolutely oppressive heat. There's no way to put it around that. Just ridiculously oppressive heat. And this is just going to be across much of the country. And you may be wondering, okay, so what's the point, MBGC? If you're showing us uh, this heat and it's going to be continuing through July. And let me also show you uh, the 8 to 14 day outlook. Look, you can see through the end of July, we have above average, not a single area of below average in lower 48 other than Alaska. And then if we look at the 6 to 10 day outlook, much of the same story. Above average, it's almost like the print copy of what I just showed you but it's six to ten day I assure you precipitation you could see um, this is not really um, I guess important in this uh, video uh, the precip is not what I'm trying to focus on what you can see I just want to show you in case of uh, you just want to know your forecast you can see blow across the plains and that sucks because that's where it will be the hottest above towards the north and northeast 8 to 14 day outlook um similar stories but a, a little bit different placements for the precipitation but again i show you the temperature very similar you could see the above average tends, extends into the south and into the nord northern uh, northwestern United States almost, other than the Pacific Northwest. And then you can see right there we have uh, a, a string of below average temperatures. Um, let's look at the 30-day forecast for August, shall we? Um, if you are not really uh, convinced about how August is going to be warm, you can see this was issued July 16th. And the day I'm recording this is July 16th. And let's go uh, see what the forecast is for valid August 2020. You can see much above average conditions across most of the country, maybe just excluding the Northwest. But overall, much above average conditions. Now, uh, you say, what does this mean? What does this mean for the winter? Well, it means actually a good thing if you want a cold winter. Counterintuitive, but it does. So let's take a look at the Enzo, as this is where it really plays a big role in uh, today's video, the, the La Nina. Based on, uh, ever since I created the last video about this, we have gotten a La Nina watch. So that means that the uh, they, they have increased confidence in a La Nina occurring. And you can see right now it's a neutral. They updated this for May, July, and June is also a neutral. So all those months are a neutral and we still are a neutral. And um, you can see... We're going to go down into a La Nina. Definitely not an El Nino. It was the case between a neutral or a La Nina. Now, there definitely still is a chance that this could remain a neutral. But you could see that they are favoring La Nina through much of uh, autumn and into winter. So that definitely indicates that... Um, I guess if you were to, you know, do like a 50-50 bet, uh, you, you're more likely to win with the La Nina. So it's kind of like a 60-40, if you will. Slightly has an edge over it, and it's kind of increasing that edge over the neutral throughout uh, throughout the last couple of weeks, and probably will through the next couple of weeks. And you could see continuing through the Northern Hemisphere winter 2020. You could see these are the models. Here's the La Nina. Some of them are split pretty equally between um, the neutral and the La Nina, while other model groups are... Uh, vastly showing something different. You could see only a few models in the neutral territory, many showing a moderate to weak to moderate La Nina. Um, even some showing a strong La Nina, but again, that isn't really, uh, that's only a few models. It's not the, that's not the mean average. So what does this mean? If we are going from a neutral pattern, so you could see kind of like a, say, 2017, 2018, a neutral pattern, and we were going into a La Nina. Now, um, I chose many of those years. I went back all the way to 1950, or I think I went back through 1980, but I, I chose this graph and I read through it, and I found years that were similar to this. So, say example, for example, uh, 2005, it started off as a, um, as a uh, neutral, and it went into a La Nina. So I took many of those years that looked uh, similar to what we have this year, a potential neutral going into a La Nina, and I took them and compiled them. And you can see this goes back to 1974. There weren't that many, which I guess kind of increases the confidence of what's going on. Notice, what we saw, or what I did was, I first uh, looked at, say, you know, 2007 was one of my years. I looked at 2007 on his graph and saw it was a neutral and it went into a La Nina. So, what I did was compiled a bunch of those years. As you saw, there were a couple of them. 
and I looked at what the July was of those years, of 2007, say 2020, like, you know, what we are in right now. You could see it was a warm July, what we are in right now. A very, very nice and warm July. A bit cooler across the Northwest, and that's kind of, what, you know, the 8 to 14 outlook was showing, a little bit cooler across the Northwest. And anywhere else, really just heat, especially across the Midwest. And that's what we've been seeing this July. So, let's see what the preceding, or not the preceding, what the following winters were of this. And this would be kind of like the possible winter that could occur after this year's July. And you can see that all the Julys that were similar in Enzo and similar in a temperature anomaly to this year had a pretty darn cold winter. You could see November through March, and it was just a year ahead now, year, a uh, year uh, leaped forward. You could see um, we had a 2008, 2017. Notice we have uh, quite a bit of uh, cooler air across the northwest and northern U.S., and then across the southern U.S., we have some warmer temperatures. So what I'm saying is that, uh, look at that, that's very cold air. What I'm saying is that we are basically uh, in line for a cold winter if uh, what uh, this is showing is true. You know, the more heat we're going to get this summer possibly could mean more cold during the winter. Now, um, you know, because I showed you that, you could see this is how hot the summers were and this is what the winters that followed were. You could see very cold across the north and northeast. Not only the northeast, but in the upper northeast, upper New England. South remaining warm, but look at that cold air. That is something we've been missing for the past couple of years and you could see that's some pretty nice cold air. So that's definitely something we'll, uh, that could be happening this year. And now let's look, I want to show you, um, okay, not that, I want to show you one more, uh, two more images. This was uh, the the temperatures preceding um, the July that was very warm, so kind of like the April to May of this year. If you recall, April and May of this year were cold, that's why I chose April to May of these years to see if they were also cold. And look what I got, I also got pretty chilly uh, time frame. Now this seems to be uh, unreasonably chilly, and quite a bit of the United States is uh, chilly in this, almost 100%. It wasn't that cold this year, but it definitely had a, a cold bias this year, it was mainly, uh, it was definitely more dominated by the cold below average temperatures than the warm so um, that further proves it that this year is similar to all these years and then let's I took it one step further just showing the precipitation um, of those years and you can see that above across the northwest that makes sense with the La Nina pattern the jet stream is just hammering into those locations so way above over there um, a mix between in the south a bit above in some regions uh, more below though for sure especially across Florida and Georgia and South Carolina but then notice we also had above across the Great Lakes and into the northeast so that's definitely some good news and we also had pockets of above across the northern plains so definitely some uh, rather interesting information that we could uh, be seeing you know with uh, above average precipitation and uh, way below average temperatures across that region we could definitely be seeing more snow especially across the northwest um, and just the northern US not so much the south but uh, this is why this winter could be a definitely a one that uh, could be very interesting a powerful one and uh, possibly a snowy and cold one that's just the easiest way to put it so hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you got a little bit more out of that video hopefully you understand um, now um, where I'm coming from with this um, and this isn't you know the end all be all up my winter forecast it's just a piece into the winter forecast that i could use so i uh, thank you guys so much for watching consider liking the video consider subscribing to the channel i'll catch you guys on the next episode see ya bye